Hey guys, this is Nick, and today we're going to take a look at how user-friendly Elementor iOS really is. And I know what you're thinking, this guy is an Elementor iOS fanboy, he's got the poster and everything, so how can he be objective? But I think the results will surprise you, because we're not only going to look at how user-friendly Elementor iOS is in the eyes of a complete beginner, a Windows user, and a Mac user, but we're also going to look at Elementor iOS from the point of view of somebody who's coming from Linux, and that's going to change things drastically. Just like today's sponsor will change drastically how you monitor your internet connection. This video is sponsored by Safing. They are an open source company that develops the Portmaster, an all-in-one network monitoring solution. It allows you to watch everything that comes in or out of your network and then block or allow the stuff you want to take action on globally or on a per app basis. Portmaster is free as in free beer and completely open source. And it also has advanced features like filter lists to automatically block ads, trackers or malware, and it can enforce secure DNS over TLS for your whole computer. All these features are easy to access thanks to a simple and legible user interface, and you can download it as a DEB or an Arch package. It's also available on Windows if you need it there as well. Safing Sportmaster is still in alpha and looking for users and input. The team is super responsive and you can contact them by mail, on Reddit or directly on GitHub. Follow the link in the description to download Portmaster and give the team your thoughts. So let's begin with the point of view of somebody who's rarely, if ever, used a computer before. And on that front, Elementor iOS might seem very user-friendly on the surface. You get a nice welcome tour that lets you change a few options, access settings or download applications, and that's a nice plus, compared to KDE, for example, where the default desktop just doesn't guide a user at all. Once you're in, you get a simple experience. The top panel clearly states what it does with an applications link and a search icon, easy to understand, the date and time, and a few system indicators, including the familiar power button glyph. The dock at the bottom should be familiar enough for anyone that's used a smartphone before, as most, if not all of them, use a button dock for the most used apps, as well as nice big app icons to represent the programs you can run. Now, I'm assuming that even people that haven't used a computer before will have been confronted to Android or iOS before. I think that's fair. So it's all pretty legible and hovering over stuff also tells you what it does. Clicking the application menu results in a simple grid of apps and a labeled search field easy to navigate. The application design is also very simple. A lot of default apps that need to have data entered by the user have a nice first run page with instructions on how to get started. For example, the email client redirects you to enter a new account, or the music app tells you to add music. The design itself is similar to what GNOME does, with a single header bar that contains all the application controls. It's a design system that's really well tailored for beginners, as everything they can do is located in just one spot. No huge menu bars to browse through, you get all the options in the same place. Something missing though is accessing the file system. By default, there is no shortcut to the file manager in the dock. Now, it's a very important part of interacting with a computer, and Elementor iOS doesn't ship enough default apps to completely abstract the file system from the user. You wouldn't interact with the files directly from the apps, you're going to interact with the files directly from the file manager. And not having that icon by default in the dock is, I think, a mistake. Now, speaking of the file manager, the one-click to navigate, double-click to open a file is probably not the simplest to understand for complete beginners. On a phone, you tap to open, period. Going to single click only or double click only would probably have been easier to understand. For a beginner user, there is virtually no difference between opening a folder in the file manager or opening a file. They are both icons located in the same applications and the expected action should be the same. The close button and maximize buttons are relatively easy to understand and the lack of minimize button won't disturb someone who isn't used to computers as they won't have picked up that habit using something else. The settings won't scare away computer beginners either. They are nicely laid out in a grid of icons and each setting panel is tight and doesn't contain too much stuff. You generally have a maximum of four tabs or five list view elements and each only contain a small number of options. Now, some of you might think that there isn't enough options, but I come from KDE land and honestly it's a refreshing change to have a clean, simple settings panel. Now, it's not a tweaking enthusiast paradise, but for a complete beginner, if they ever want to change anything, they're not going to be lost. Installing applications is pretty easy on Elementor iOS as well. The App Center is one of the better designed app stores on Linux desktops, even though GNOME software has recently passed them by. You get nice featured apps, a list of recently updated ones, and categories, so it's really easy to filter what you're looking for. 
The Installed tab also handles updates, and these are easy to read and understand. But this is where the fun ends. The App Center is barren out of the box, only listing elementary OS applications that have been submitted to its Flatpak remote. This means that you have, in total, 77 applications available to you at the time I'm recording this. Now, of course, you have the ability to add Flatpak remotes and install from the Ubuntu repos using the command line, but a computer beginner will never think of that or even know about it. This means that out of the box, even searching for something won't return anything useful. If I'm looking for a word processing app and type word in the search field, I get nothing of use for my use case. If I type spreadsheets, no results. If I type browser or Firefox or Chrome, because people told me to install that, I have no relevant results. Sure, there is a message there telling people they can sideload apps from Flathub, but a complete beginner won't know what that means and will just stop at the main message, no apps found. Hell, I know what that means, but I only noticed this message because Cassidy, the co-founder of Elementary, pointed it out during a live stream recently. This basically means that Elementary OS, while it has many quality apps, is completely unsuitable for a complete beginner new to computers. They'll get the feel that their system is limited to what they already have installed. And while a web browser, an email client, and media players' photo viewers might be enough for a lot of people, as soon as they decide they need something else, they're out of here. And that is a real shame, because that strategy on paper is excellent. Only showing apps that have been vetted, that work well, that look nice, and that are generally considered safe is a great thing for beginners and for regular users as well, if and only if you have a complete and full ecosystem of applications that cover every niche. This is not the case for elementary OS. So elementary OS interface-wise is probably one of the easiest systems to use, even easier than GNOME in my opinion. But the lack of graphically installable applications out of the box just makes it really hard to recommend to a complete beginner, unless you are there to add Flathub for them before you give them their device. Now, for someone who's used to Windows, Elementary doesn't really hold any appeal out of the box. The interface is virtually different in every single way that matters. Instead of a taskbar, you get a panel and a dock, and the functionality is basically spread out between multiple places. The Applications menu sort of replaces the Start menu, the dock serves as the taskbar with the app launchers, and the indicators are just on the top right instead of the top left. The lack of application indicators will be problematic here, as Windows apps can generally stay opened in the system tray, while Elementary OS doesn't allow that behavior. It's going to require a lot of time and muscle memory change to get someone used to Windows to be comfortable here. No desktop icons either, which is something most Windows users will miss. I know you're expecting a snarky comment about desktop icons here, but not right now. The application style, while easy to grasp and understand, will also be a big departure from what Windows 11 and 10 do. While these are trying to do away with menu bars, they don't use header bars either. Someone used to Windows and third-party apps won't really find something they know here, but I don't think adapting to the header bar would be that hard. Now the button position, on the other hand, will definitely confuse Windows users. The close button is on the left here, at the exact opposite of what Windows does. The maximize button is relatively similar, but there is no minimize button. Someone used to that feature is definitely going to have a hard time adapting at first. I know I did. Now nowadays, I think that minimizing is pretty much useless and I never use it, but at the time, when I started being confronted with no minimize button, I was just as lost as the first time I used a video game controller. Then again, maybe I'm just stupid. In the file manager, you get a single click to navigate, double click to open behavior that is sure to throw some people off. Going into the settings, Windows users will get a control panel-like experience with a grid of icons and a few options inside of each. Of course, there are a lot less options here than on Windows, so a power user will definitely feel that this is lacking. And we come to the app installation thing again. Sure, the App Center won't confuse Windows users, it's super simple to understand. Now, the lack of apps probably won't hurt Windows 10 users as well, because, well, they used to have an app store with nothing in it. Now, jokes aside, the same problem applies here. Without any prior knowledge of Linux, there is no way a user will be satisfied with the elementary OS app situation. Even someone who's been using fast alternatives to popular Windows software, like GIMP or LibreOffice, they won't find them in the store. Granted, a Windows user will probably think of looking for a downloadable file to install a program, and they might end up downloading a flat pack, which will work. I hope they don't decide to download an RPM or a deb or a tar.gz file, 
because none of these will install on Elementor iOS out of the box. The default application situation on Elementor iOS is just not right for a Windows user as well. While they are more used to try and download applications from outside of the store, good luck to them if they try to install them on Elementor iOS. If they don't have any prior Linux experience or haven't looked it up beforehand, they're done. So for Windows users, I'd say Elementor iOS is just not well suited. From the default experience and desktop to the way of getting and installing apps, the window management, and the limited settings. It's just going to require a lot of relearning. There are easier alternatives in the Linux world for Windows users. Now, on the surface, macOS users will have a nice time with Elementor iOS. Most of their habits will be undisturbed. The dock serves the exact same purpose, apart from the lack of a trash can. And while the top panel doesn't fit a global menu, you get the time and date and system indicators. All the system actions aren't located in the same place, but the power button glyph will be perfectly understandable here. The multitasking view is basically the same as mission control on the Mac as well. One point of contention will be the lack of application indicators. On macOS, apps can fit their icons in the top panel. On Elementor iOS, they can't, so say goodbye to Discord, Nextcloud, or any video chat application you might have been used to. If you close their window, they're gone, even though they're still running in the background, and good luck understanding that. macOS doesn't use an applications menu, instead relying on an app grid or spotlight. Elementor iOS uses the same shortcut out of the box to open the applications menu than what Mac uses for Spotlight, so there's at least a point of similarity here. The applications menu is kind of like the full screen app grid of macOS in miniature format, so I would expect a Mac user to get used to it in no time. No desktop icons here either though, which might seem weird to macOS users. At least macOS does desktop icons in a sort of usable fashion by grouping them into stacks of the same file types. The design style of applications is really close to what macOS users expect. With a dark and light theme, accent colors, and header bars, it's virtually identical. If they try to look for more options though, they are going to start looking for a global menu, which isn't there on elementary. So they might get the feeling that the default apps are a lot more limited than what they're used to on macOS. The close button is in the same place, but the maximize button isn't and doesn't work in the same way as it does on macOS. No minimize button either here, so it might be a bit tricky for a Mac user to handle window management on elementary. In terms of settings, I would say elementary settings are virtually identical to macOS's ones. In terms of presentation, of look and feel, and in terms of the breadth of options available, elementary OS definitely is on the same level as Apple's desktop operating system. No trouble here. And again, we come to the disappointing application situation. The TLDR is the same here as for Windows users. The Mac App Store doesn't have everything a Mac user might want, and the situation will be the same on Elementor iOS. Minus all that editorial bullcrap that Apple adds to their App Store, which only serves to hide the fact that it is virtually empty. Mac users are also used to download applications from websites and install them, but the install procedure isn't going to be the same here. Downloading anything other than a Flatpak app will result in a non-working package format out of the box. App images are the closest to what Mac users are used to, but on Elementor iOS, they don't automatically integrate with the menu, so it's going to be a hit or miss experience. So for macOS users, Elementor iOS only has surface level similarities. Window management is different. Launching applications is different. You don't get more options through the global menu, and you can't have app icons in the top panel. Installing apps will also be a major pain point. I'd say the proximity of Elementor iOS to macOS is actually working against it, because it seems familiar, but advanced actions aren't the same and the system generally doesn't behave in the same way, so you might get tricked into thinking it's exactly like macOS while it's not. Now for someone used to Linux, I'm not going to talk about the desktop experience itself because I can't compare Pantheon to every single other desktop environment. I'm only going to talk about the application situation. If you're used to GNOME or KDE on any distribution, you're used to have a well-stocked graphical app store with everything from the repos. You might not use it, but you know it's full of stuff. And that's where Elementor iOS will be divisive. First, let's say that, like me, you're a graphical first type of person. In that case, Elementor iOS will be annoying for you because you will have to go and manually download a Flatpak file from Flathub, open it, and then you'll be able to access Flathub through the App Center. Not super annoying, but definitely an extra step we could do without. If you prefer to install apps from packages and the repos, then you're out of luck. The App Center has no option to ever display these applications. It's command line only. Now you could use the command line once to install GNOME software from the repos and then access everything in those repos, but that would be cheating. 
Now, if you're used to the command line and prefer installing stuff this way, then Elementor iOS won't cause you any pain at all. Flatpak is here out of the box. You can install anything from the repos from here. All you have to do is manually add Flathub as a remote. Which brings me to the ironic conclusion about Elementor iOS. On paper, it's one of the most user-friendly distributions because they have a laser focus on making sure that the graphical experience is on point and perfect. And they are right because the general masses that use computers do not want to interact with the command line, ever. And yet, with the decision to not display all available applications for Elementary in their graphical store, they've basically killed that whole ambition. Because while the intention is understandable, to only have apps that they can ensure are running well, looking okay, and aren't outdated, the end result is that virtually no one, except Linux users who are used to the command line, can find this system user-friendly at least in the application installation department. If you're coming from Windows or Mac OS, or if you're a complete computer beginner, trying to install an application graphically outside of what's offered in the store is virtually impossible. You would have to have prior knowledge of Linux or of the fact that Elementary will only allow you to install graphically Flatpak applications. You simply cannot assume that people will have this knowledge. So in the end, while the general Elementary OS desktop will be perfect for computer beginners and will be good for macOS users, the only population it can serve without any compromise is Linux users that know how to use the command line. And this population generally tends to like customizing their desktop, which is not something you can really do on Elementary OS. So as much as I love Elementary OS and I support their vision and I support their work, I just can't say that the experience will be user-friendly for any category of user. The application situation is just not acceptable for any type of user apart from Linux users used to the command line who are willing to completely bypass the App Center. So this video was made possible by Slimbook and all of you must know what Slimbook is by now, but I'm still going to talk about it because they're awesome. They make Linux desktops, Linux laptops. They're available everywhere with every keyboard layout at all price points. Basically, I only use their stuff nowadays, their laptop and their desktop. And if you need a new Linux device, check out the link in the description below. I can only recommend them. But thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't hesitate to like and subscribe or dislike and tell me why in the comments. If you prefer Odyssey, all my videos are also synced there. And if you want to help support the channel, you can join my Patreon subscribers and my YouTube members and you will get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.